Yaka who tells you. And we're all a great teacher at the same time. So who are you going to learn from? You're going to learn from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives of people like Brother Polite. The positives and negatives of people like Sarah Sudhisattva. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netter Cat. You're going to learn. You're definitely going to learn from King Noble. You're definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku. message in a lot of the videos that he put out and I try to catch all of them. I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KNBS and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well and I have nothing against that because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand, cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. Himself, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So right in the time of your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying. You, yes, we have to bring reality temple here on earth. Reality <laughs> temple here on earth because. Yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a, he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to, he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. Shout out to your platform, Tali. All the best to you guys for continuing to stretch in perspective, to stretch in what is possible, and to continue to bring healing into the space of yourself and others. Yes. Good evening, soul brothers and sisters. This is Tangi Cox, the Black Sheep, and I am propositioning you to entertain just a little while of being in reality. 
And this is going to hurt soul sisters and brothers because a lot of us cannot accept reality. I empower you to for one year to subscribe to the Reality Temple on Earth. And at the end of 12 months, draw your conclusion of what have you learned in that amount of time. I empower you. You will never, ever, ever think, feel, or entertain nonsense ever again, period. I would like to see my soul sisters and brothers awaken. This requires time. You need to spend about a year watching, researching, and looking. Reality Temple on Earth is life changing, and I stand on that. changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continued to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community actor named Tariq Ibn Rahm has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Eberrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios. We are proof of this message. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You think you don't want to do nothing.
Ride, ride, 
ride, let's get this party started. Ride, 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 let's get this party started. Quickly! Okay. In the name of our ancestors, peace forever. And always and welcome to another edition of what we call the Reality Stump on Earth. Internet Ministry, I am the gatekeeper, host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your soul. 
Soul Brother, number one. I welcome everyone in the chat rooms, in the clouds, friends and enemies. <laughs> welcome you to this uh, spontaneous broadcast of this uh, platform. We are simulcasting right here on Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry YouTube channel Angel Snup Nup 7 YouTube channel and also our uh, which actually we, we're simulcasting in a, in, a, in a lot of our Facebook um, platforms Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry on Facebook, which is simulcasting to our other, <laughs> our other Facebook platform. I don't want to hold us long. I just want to give my little two cents and get out of here. I want to dedicate this uh, broadcast. To our ancestors, our fallen brothers from the Black Panther, the original uh, Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. I would wish and I want so much to be able to accomplish something that their lives did not or was not sacrificed in vain. There's no doubt that these young men were assassinated. There's no doubt. Twenty some year old fighting the government for real, I'm not talking about making a YouTube video. 20 some year old men. In fact, most of the brothers and sisters in the 1960s, they were young people. I don't remember, what, what were the old heads doing? It was the young people, 21. Our people in college, that was able to, they couldn't take it no more. And they poured out into the streets. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to do something. And so Dr. King, he was a young man in his 20s. Malcolm X, Mark Clark, Huey P. Newton, all of them was young folks. Where was the old people? Where was the... Well, I tell you, old folks were sitting back in the cut. Y'all young folks, troublemakers. They called Dr. King a troublemaker. They called the Black Panther there. Y'all y'all disturbing things. Y'all disturbing the lynching. Y'all disturbing the job discrimination. Y'all disturbing the unfair housing. Y'all disturbing all this good stuff we got going on here. Give the white folks a little time. And we still say that today. Give the white folks. They, they waking up one day. We shall overcome. These was young people. They never fought a government before. I'm a revolutionary. Fred Hampton said. You can kill me. But you can't kill the revolution. And it's still here. But unfortunately, those in this time are too damn scared and too damn comfortable to be like Mark Clark and Fred Hampton and Stokely Carmichael or Dr. King or Malcolm X or any of this. Too damn comfortable to rise up. 
because we should have learned from their mistakes. And we should be successful in the revolution that will not be televised. It might be on the internet, <laughs> but it might it's not going to be televised. I have to give my props to these young people and even some of these young people exist today they're willing to go on the street risk their lives and go to jail and die for justice I have to honor I have to give my props regardless of race to any young person when you see an injustice, something not right, you willing to go out there and fight. But I'm telling you, it's not appreciated. Many of our younger people today don't even know who Mark Clark is. They don't know who Fred Hampton is. They barely know who Malcolm X is because of a Spike Lee movie. We don't teach our children, we don't teach our babies nothing. They don't know nothing except how to twerk, get drunk and smoke weed and do and foolishness or I just want to be rich. I got to get paid, get my money. They have no integrity. They have no character. They have nothing to stand on. Because they think they made it until they get pulled over by the police and get a reality check and hopefully they don't lose their life. And even we as adults, we get comfortable and we can die in our house where we think that we safe. Just recently, what was it? A sister was shot in the head by this cop in her house. She called the police because she felt as though an intruder, somebody was trying to break in or stuff. She called the police. It wasn't an intruder. It was those who vowed to protect and serve shot her in the head. I'm scared for my life. You way over here with a gun. And yes, she did have a pot of boiling water. She way over there. Do you know what it would take for her to take that pot of boiling water and toss it? You have lots of time to get away from it. You got a gun. You could have shot her in the leg. She wasn't that kind of a threat. But this is the environment that we're in. And this is what Mark Clark and Fred Hampton were sick of. They got really sick of Chicago. And they elected Mayor Harold Washington because they were sick. Malcolm said it best. If you get angry, you got to stay angry. And you fight until the threat stops. That's why a lot of people get shot way more time than necessary because I got to pop you till you stop. One bullet killed her, but I want to make sure until the threat stop. You still under threat. But for some reason, after the assassination of Dr. King, Oh, we gonna stop. We don't have to. We don't have to keep fighting no more. We don't have to. It's all over with. Rest in peace, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. Real revolutionary. Not they're not on YouTube. There was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. Boots on the ground. That's how I was raised. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. It was boots on the ground. There was no hiding behind an avatar. Boots on the ground. You met people face to face. 
And if you want to get silly, somebody punch you in your damn face. There wasn't a lot of this disrespect. Because if you wanted to talk crazy stuff, you had to do it in person. Couldn't hide behind an avatar. All these fake ass names that we got. Fred Hampton, the Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam, and our countless other soldiers out here, they, they, it was boots on the ground. Hiding and, you want to play hide and seek. I'm a revolutionary hide and seek. And everybody was poor. There was no, well, some of them was poor. You had people like, I mean, this is just the reality, this is the truth. You had like people in the nation of Islam, I'm, you know, living the rich life. You know, they living in mansions or whatever. But our freedom fighters wasn't living high on the hog. What do it look like you living wealthy and rich and then talk about you fighting the system? The same system that you're supposed to be fighting, that's how you making your money and living good. There's a contradiction. Revolutionaries are poor. Revolutionaries suffer. If you're not suffering, you ain't poor and broke down and out. You ain't in no damn revolution because everything about you goes to the revolution. You ain't worried about getting rich. I want to get free. Young people. And we got older folks sitting on their ass right now. Willing to do nothing. That's what we want to talk about. This week. We have seen something that has probably never happened or it's very rare in American politics we saw the current president of the United States who was running for another term he decided to drop out of the race now before you want to come here and you want to argue with me about Republicans and Democrats and all this type of stuff. I don't, that's not my thing. I'm an opportunist. I'm a revolutionary. I'm a liberator. Republican or Democrat, if they can give me what I want, then I will go there. I don't care. I use the tools that's been given to me to get what I want. What do you want, Mark Hampton? I mean, Mark Clark, what do you want, Fred Hampton? I want freedom, I want to be liberated. That's what I want. What you talking about, Brother Malcolm? By any means necessary. Voting, the ballot or the bullet, by any means necessary. So we have, so don't come to me, are you a Republican, are you a Democrat? I'm none of them. I want to be free. I'm a revolutionary. I'm a liberator. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm like Fannie Lou Hamer. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick of it. You should too, but no. You have become comfortable. We know that's what we want to talk about tonight. You, we become comfortable in the cesspool. Biden was pressured. And he punked out. He bowed down to the pressure of his party. Chances are there's nothing 
they could do about it because he was he won the nomination. But he punked out. All right, y'all win. I'm old. I'm C now. I'll drop out. So he punked out. He punked out to his party. The leader. Well, for the best. So we can beat Donald Trump. It's best that you sit your old ass down. Okay, all right. I'm going to endorse my vice president. What's her name? Kamala Harris. So now the Democratic Party has been re-energized re re by the vice president. Already raised $80 million just that quick. Woo! Go, Kamala, go. Go, Kamala. Many black folks, even more proud, going back to the time of Obama. Woo, a black woman. Person of color. Woo! We gonna do it again. Now it's a black woman time. It's woman time. It's hammer time. Uh-oh, uh-oh, come, here come the hammer. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here come the hammer. <laughs> Here come Kamala. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here come Kamala. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I see it on the internet. We gonna do it again. We put Barack Obama there. Now we gonna put Kamala. That's her name. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Kamala Harris. Barack Obama was not facing somebody like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a different, whole different breed, a whole different ball game. I personally don't care because I'm a revolutionary. I'm an opportunist revolutionary. I really could care less. It's according to who would give me what I want or who I think would give me what I want. And one thing for sure was clear and made clear this Democratic Party made very clear they're not interested in reparations, they're not interested in, in giving black people, the black community, black Americans, nothing. They already made that clear. Donald Trump is telling you and putting your problem on the table. He said these immigrants and the situation is hurting his, the Hispanic population and the black folks in this country. Democrats ain't saying a damn thing about the harm and the research. Who's paying for these immigrants to stay here? Your tax dollars and they're taking your resources. You paying for their medical care? You're going to pay for their children's education? You're going to pay, woo, the Democrats. So the new figurehead that they're crying and happy about is Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Harris. Nobody knows how an election will turn out. Nobody knows. I'm not going to try to guess. But for her, really, it's an uphill battle. I don't care. All the excitement and all like this, for her, it's going to be an uphill battle. Why do you say that? Because this country is racist. We have not overcome. We, we might get there one day. We're waiting for the folks, white folks to wake up and things get better. But in 2024, no. It's still racist. Oh, only in the Democrat, I mean, only in the Republican Party. No, there are racists in the Democratic Party. 
There are two types of racists. One that will tell you in your face, and then the other ones that do it on the down low. By using their position to keep you in jail. Who's that keeping you in jail? Kamala Harris. Oh, she was a prosecutor. And she went over the top. She made sure you stayed in jail a long, long time. Miss Democrat prosecutor, she didn't help black folks at all. And these folks is whooping and hollering over because she want to put some more black folks in prison, in jail. But there's going to be a lot of people in this country that's not going to vote for her because she's a woman of color. Not black color Because she's not a black woman To my knowledge To what I know Her father is a Jamaican Well that's black you say And her mother is some type of Indian But she's not a black American Now they will vote for her They will vote for Barack Obama Because they're not black American You ought to have seen the hell that they gave Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson would be a foundation of black American. Jesse Jackson would be called a black American, a descendant of a slave in this country. Oh no, we're not gonna have that. But when Barack Obama comes, oh things have changed. Oh, we can accept him because he's not really a black American. He's a Kenyan white person or whatever his mama was. Not a descendant of slaves. They, the folks in this country, have a problem, have a hatred for foundation of black Americans, black Americans, these, we who are the descendants of slaves who suffered Jim Crow. Oh no, not you. We don't want no ex slave children. We don't want no ex-slave children to be president of this country. But we would give the illusion that we're open to the idea because we're going to take these half people who you will call black, but they're not black. See, this is why we have to leave this black stuff. I'm going to talk about that. We need to leave this black stuff alone, period. Because you have these foreigners coming in here like they represent black Americans. No, you are Kenyan. You are Jamaican. You are not a black American, a descendant of slaves. You're not a foundation of black American. You're here benefiting from the blood, sweat, and the tears of our ancestors. But these foreigners will carry the sick ideas of our oppressor and then the oppressor will say, well, those black people, but you fail to acknowledge or you fail to say, oh, but those black people are foreigners. They wasn't born here. They're not you. They're not black American. They want to put, oh, it's black, black people. So they put us all in one. I don't want to be in that category. So I got to stand with brothers and sisters who don't want to be a part of this, this black whatever it is and they want to focus on us as a people be, hey, we the one who suffered the reason why they're here is because of our suffering and then these oppressors these pieces of trash will use them because they're black to justify what they do to us to keep us from reparations and the things that we have earned. You ain't giving us nothing free. We have been here for over 400 years. We earned every damn, you don't even have enough money. You don't have enough wealth to give us what we're worth. But like I told you, we're dealing with people that savages towards us. We haven't done, there are people who done you wrong. Then when it get 
caught up, they act, they will turn around and act like you done something to them. You loan somebody $500. They don't want to pay you back. They'll turn around like you did something to them. And you gave them, we gave this nation our blood, our sweat, and our tears over 300 years of free, free labor. Over 100 years of underpaid labor, Jim Crow. And then you turn around and put crap in our community. And you use us for experiments. The Tuskegee experiment. All these evil, wicked things that you have done to people in here that's more of a citizen than your happy ass is. Let's keep it real. So this is another false, this false hope. This is a false, false crap to make us happy, make we think like we're doing. She's not a black American. She's a half Jamaican, whatever, uh, uh, Indian type person. And then she went to a black school because she's not going to be accepted nowhere else. We don't call her black, but she's not black like that. And once she was able to climb up the ladder, the hell with y'all. That's how they do. Not all biracial people are like that. If they are embraced by Foundation of Black Americans, Black people, the descendant of slaves. I'm with you. I'm black to the day I die. I just recently found out that one of our soul sisters, Cindy Heron, right here in the middle, her mother is Caucasian. She don't talk about it. And she always called herself I'm a black woman. I'm a black, I'm a sister. But her mother is Caucasian. And she don't use that. Well, I don't, she can't pass her features. She can't pass for white. There are those who would take advantage of their gift. If I'm biracial, I look more white, I will say that I'm a white person. If I'm biracial and I look more black, then I will be black. And I will take advantage of whatever I can get. Wherever I can go, that's where I'm going to go. Somebody like, Ma, Ma, what's her name? Mariah Carey. Her father is some kind of African and her mother is Caucasian. And what I noticed about Mariah Carey, when it comes to music, because she know that Black folks get down with the music. She all in our face. But when it comes to a lot of other things, I notice she... Well, you know what I'm saying. That's how a lot of some of these folks do. And some of these folks, the only reason why they claim black is because they have no choice. They look like me. There are some biracial people who is dark as I am. And there are some black folks, they, they are so light, they look like light-skinned black folks to me, but to some Caucasian people, they let them pass for white. Now to me, I've seen some of these pictures, I said, they look like a light-skinned black person to me. Oh, but they pass it for white, and white folks accept them, and that's where they go. This woman is not a black American. But they putting that out there like she is. You can call her a woman of color, but actually she's a biracial. But we're going to use those things to deceive. That's why we're going to concentrate. We're going to deceive and trick. She's not a black American. She's not the descendant of a slave. 
Her people did not suffer in Jim Crow. Her mama and her ancestors wasn't in this country free labor or making $2 a damn day. She can't say that. I can say that. And I know it. I don't even have to be taught it. I know it because I lived it. I was too young to know that my parents, my people was making $2 a day, but I saw it. She can't say that. So they raising up. She's the new democratic hope. She's the, the new hope for these folks. And she's the hope for other black folks in the democratic party, right? But there's a lot of folks that's not going to vote for her because she's black or she's a woman of color. Even black folks. There are some black folks that don't believe that a woman should be president. They did not support Obama because black folks not supposed to be president of the United States. There are some black folks that think that way. They probably dying out, but there's a lot of them that thought that way. I know my mother didn't, she didn't think too much of black folks. <laughs> we, she probably would have been the one. Well, no Negro should be no president. Well, I'm saying it nice. I couldn't. I, I'm not going to say how she really expressed herself on that. So a lot of folks are not going to. Democrats too. They're not going to vote for her. Because she's a woman of color. They're not going to vote for her because she's a woman. There's a lot of religious women in this country. The man is supposed to lead. So she's not going to get that group. And they are Democrats. I don't want to see. I was with Joe Biden. I'm not going to support no woman. People can say anything they want out of their mouth. But when you go voting, you know they, they put that screen behind you. It's a whole different ball game. A lot of these folks will say one thing and do something else. In this country, it is racist and it is sexist. So Donald Trump has that edge. Even though a lot of folks don't like him, he's still a white man, a rich white man, that can qualify for this job. A lot of women are not going to vote for a woman, Republican or Democrat. On one of my posts, some of them ex expressed it. That's not how God wants things to be. See, there you go. Hillary Clinton was in a better position to be the first woman president in this country. And look what happened to Hillary Clinton. In fact, Hillary Clinton probably would have a better chance at beating Dr. Uh, Donald Trump than Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris is nothing but a bunch of hype. But Hillary Clinton, minus she's a woman, she fits the criteria. A rich white woman. Oh, go Hillary. You only 100 years old. <laughs> go, go get her, Hillary. Now, I'm not a politician. Again, I really don't care. But this is what they're presenting. They're already talking about how Kamala Harris is the, the new Barack Obama, the female version. She's going to win. Well, oh, we'll see. Now, this is the, this is the mind-boggling thing about this. Like I said, I'm not a politician. I don't keep up with this Democrat and the liberals, all these different names and la-la-la, lolly guy. I'm, I want my freedom. I don't give a damn how I get it, who I use, whatever you, if you can help me get 
what I want, then so be it. But it is, it's mind boggling. Was it not? Now, I could be in error. Was it not the Republican Party that set the ball in motion that caused the Emancipation Proclamation and the uh, and the recuse of slavery. It was the Republican Party. Matter of fact, I believe it was the first the first seats that was gained by black people. It was because of the Republican Party. Right? I don't know when this happened. All of a sudden, black folks want to be and they're loyal to the Democratic Party. But all they had to do is do a little research. And you will see that, that the Republican Party is more beneficial for you. Go look up and do your research. They don't do no research or nothing. I don't know what it is about the Democratic Party. Go look up the history of the Democratic Party going back to slavery. There was the suckers that was on your ass. The Democratic Party. They was the ones giving you pure hell. The ones that was giving you a break was the Republicans. But the answer is simple. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, why do we love the white man? Because he gives us nothing. Why do you love the Democratic Party? Because they give you nothing. That's why they're loyal. And we still have a slave mindset. We like abuse. I guess we like marching. I guess we like them, oh Masa, don't do me like that Masa. Uh, I guess we like, some folks thrive on abuse and neglect. There are some women and some men in abusive relationships, the abuse is a sign of love. If they are not abused, they believe that the person they with don't love them. And that's how we are. We are attracted to the sick folks. Many of us, we are attracted to those that don't mean us no good. We, we just love them because they steal our money and lie and they cheat and we can't let them go. That's a sickness. We sick. I'm looking at all these happy black faces. Kamala Harris. Kamala, what the hell are you crapping about for? You ain't gonna get nothing. That's all right. That's all right. Because that feeds the illusion. Oh, don't, all y'all pro-black folks, <laughs> don't get to laughing. Don't get to giggling. Because when those, when the first Black Panther movie came out, that Black Panther Wakanda stuff feeds your delusion. Oh, that's the way Africa's supposed to be. Look at look at the Black Panther. Look at T'Challa. Look at the and y'all love the Lion King too. All that fantasy and fiction that feeds your sick ass mentality. If it wasn't for the white man, we would be like Wakanda, cause I'm a happy African. You ain't no damn better than Democrats. It's so many of us. We're so quick to make Marjorie and judge other folk, then when we, when we look at your ass, you ain't no better. You in La La Land, you delusional, just as Christians, just as those in the Democratic Party, all of the black folks, black foundation of black Americans is just some damn hallucinating, delusional ass group of people. Ain't nobody better than another. You might have this delusion and another having a, all of us or delusion in some kind of shape or form. That's the reason why, in order to wake us up out of this condition, there must be a reality check. That's why there must be a reality temple on earth. 
Otherwise, you're going to continue to live like Stevie Wonder said. You're going to continue to live in La La Land. The Democratic Party is your enemy. But when you are in love with an abuser, that's your lover. Because they give you nothing. So don't laugh at nobody. Because all of you are delusional. You believe in some kind of fairy tale. Some kind of, in some kind of shape or form. You're out there in Google land. And you got nothing. Always a slave. Always a servant. Kamala Harris gonna save us. Donald Trump gonna save us. Somebody gonna save us. Except you can't save yourself. You can't save yourself because you're a slave. You need a master. You need a slave, a savior. You need somebody to do something for you. But then you want to be treated like a man. I'm a man. I'm a woman. But you act like a slave. I'm free, but you don't act free. You don't talk free. You don't walk free. Because you have not paid the price of freedom. Freedom is not free. There's a price to pay and you're not willing to pay that price. They give you nothing. Why do you love all these YouTube personalities? Because they give you nothing. Sit on your ass with some bonbon, smoke you some weed, and you even do it with me. And I know I'm not like that. Long as you can be entertained. They give you nothing. Except big speeches and words. Then you take your happy ass to work. Or you go back to sleep. Or whatever. You're nothing like Mark Clark or Fred Hampton. You're nothing like those in the 60s and you hollering black power. We gonna talk about that and get out of here. We gonna talk about black power. I, I hear that. Let's talk about black power. If you can't handle this type of talk, get the hell out of here. Most people won't even come near. They won't even come near me because I destroyed their fairy tales, their nightmare. They sleepwalking. You dreaming. I'm like an alarm clock. When you when you're in your good sleep. And then the alarm go off. You trying to find that clock. Stop that. You messing with my dream. You, you, uh, you messing with my rest. Why don't Angel Snuff Nuff 7? Why don't you shut up? You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about, then teach me. If I'm crazy, then I don't have, I'm not responsible for my actions. If I'm crazy, you can't prove none of it. And you only embarrass yourself because this crazy man, this person that don't know what he's talking about, will verbally, intellectually whoop your ass day in and day out. All these suckers that come here and try to challenge reality, you're going to get your ass whooped. Your best bet is just to, you don't have to agree with me. Just stay the hell away from me with your foolishness. Because I'm an adult. I'm grown. Don't bring me them fairy tales. Don't bring me that Jack and the Beanstalk garbage to me. Jack and Jill went up the hill with a pail of water. You, don't, you can't bring that here. This is reality. And that's the only thing Fred Hampton and Mark Clark and Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad and Fannie Lou Hamer and all our people during that period of time, that's the only thing, they, it was real for them. They couldn't sleep like you. You don't worry about the police knocking down your door. You don't worry about nobody burning no cross or throwing a bomb in your house. You don't worry about none of that. But if you 
was a real revolutionary, you would. Somebody would try to take you out. They gotta take you out. You're dangerous. You might wake up the other 40 million. Gotta take you out. You might inspire them. We gotta take out Nat Turner. Can't have him running around. Start rebellions all over. Oh, oh, no, we got we gotta stop this. Like Barney Fife said, we gotta nip this in the bud. So the anger from the young people got to the level starting in the late 50s into the 60s where it reached its height and there was a slogan called Black Power. I know about it because I lived it. Some of you didn't live it. I lived it. And it meant something. It don't mean nothing now. Hell, Donald Trump did it. Hell, I think I seen Biden do it. What is black power? You hollering black power. I don't know the origins of the slogan or where it come from. There's different stories. I remember somebody said it was a congressman from New York, I believe, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. that first coined black power. I, I don't know who was the first one. I, and it really don't make any difference. Black power. Lead the charge. Time to fight. Black power. What is the power? Why do it exist? It exists because of do, 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 do. Why do black power exist? Why do you want black power? Do, 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 do. Because white power doing you wrong. If it was not for white power there would be no need for Black power. Look at all the time that went by. Black power didn't exist. Why you need a, a black power? You need a black power because under white power, you are oppressed. So you need your own power to rise up against this power that's oppressing you. That's why you need black power. You need black power because I'm called black. And we think that's good, even today. We think that that's good. Black Power family, Hotel family. Black is a European classification. And you will quickly talk about how Kutikite was, was turned into Toby. And Toby is a white man's name. Black is a white man's name. That's his racial classification. Nobody was using, even when you go to some parts of Africa, black, what is a black, what are you talking about? They don't accept, they don't embrace the European race classification. But you do, black power. How is that power when you still embrace the portions of your enemy? Who gave you that? Toby? You might as well say Toby power. Because that's where it come from. It didn't come from you. You a free man. But you're unable to label yourself, identify yourself. You still need your masa to classify you. 
So where's the power in that, Toby? You still under his rule. What's the sense of calling yourself Shabazz and Mokham Hotel Aztec Shamaka, whatever these be? You still Toby. If you're not if you're not given a name by the white man, then you embrace other foreigners. Other people that you don't know nothing about. You name yourself as some some unknown Israelite, some unknown Egyptian, some unknown Arab. You still Toby. Cause those not your names. You don't know nothing about that stuff. I'm a free man, so if I'm free, I'm able to create my own name just like they created their own name. I don't need your damn name. That's why black don't have no power. Because it's all still part of the white man. It's still part of, of the oppressor. And you don't know that you think that you're doing something revolutionary. It was revolutionary in that time, during the time of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. It was revolutionary in that time. You're supposed to be free. And you should know better. But you still trapped in time. But let us look at black power. When you look at black power, what is power? Power is activity. Power is action. Power is energy. What happens when you turn off the power? Then you fall into darkness. There's no light. There's no activity. If it's in the dark, nobody can not see it. So in the scriptures, one of the first things that God had to do, he said, let there be light. Turn on the power. So when you, when, so when they hollered black power in the late 50s into the 60s, into the early 70s, black power family, there was power behind the words. There was activity behind the words. How can you holler black power and there's no activity? There's no energy. The black power movement, that means it's, it moves. That means it's activity. The civil rights movement. That means you have to progress. When you look at the period between the 50s and the late, the early 70s, there was consistent movement. They wasn't saying black power just for the sake of it. I'm using that as a rallying cry to take action on good times Michael Evans had a jacket called black action black power black action when you under when you call yourself oppressed you have to take action because you got to get this sucker off of your back you got to get this boot off your neck Black power. The brothers in the Olympics, they stood up with the black power sign. I mean what I say. I don't give a damn what you do. Black power. And the brother said, I'll do it again. Even though uh, you, you gonna, you're going to lose this. I don't give a damn about that. Because black power will give me what I want. 
That's crap coming from my enemy. Black power will give me what I want because I earned it. I'm more powerful than my enemy is. I don't need their diamond. I don't need their swimming pool. I don't need their record contract. I don't get a damn thing from them except leave me the hell alone. Black power family, give me freedom. Just like the uh, revolutionary of this country. What is his name? Patrick Henry, one of them said, give me liberty or give me death. I don't need nothing from England. I just need my freedom. I don't give a damn about Britain. Just leave me the hell alone. And they fought their mama country two times. Black power. So by the by 1968, with the murder of Dr. King, and then Dr. King's people started to sell out. They start taking cabinet positions, and folks start doing whatever. And again, before you start running your mouth, remember now. Look, okay. So we had the. Dr. King was murdered. Things start slowing down. You had many members of the of the what what whatever, whatever was left over of the Black Panther Party. They started marrying white women and uh, the, the 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 original Rainbow Coalition towards the end of the the Black Panther Party. Start going. Black power start fizzling out. I know because I, I lived it. You don't have to teach me. You don't have to teach me about it. I was looking at this with my own eyes. I watched it. I watched this die. So by the time at the end of the 70s, black power was done. It was the end. You still had Jesse Jackson saying a little something. Now mind you, see, People bragged about the Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam wasn't doing nothing. Elijah Muhammad was still alive in 1973, 74, whatever. They wasn't doing nothing. After Dr. King was murdered, all that hollering and screaming, the black officer, all that was done. And the Nation of Islam was seen really as it always really was. Nothing but a church. Malcolm X is the one that was talking about black nationalism and black power, whatever. The Nation of Islam, they will even tell you, the Nation of Islam was always nothing but a new church to go to. Bring the people to Allah. They used that as a selling tool. But they will even tell you, what is the purpose of the FOI? The purpose of the FOI is not... It's not a revolutionary. The purpose of the FOI is to convert you and bring you to Islam. There was nothing, there never was nothing revolutionary about the nation of Islam. Malcolm did that. They wasn't doing nothing. I know, I watched it. I heard, I was living it. I saw it. Black power was dead. The power went out. Ain't been back on since. I know y'all hollering black power now, but that light went out. Basically, when Dr. King was assassinated, the power went out. That was it. How can you holler black power and there's no movement? I was taught in the nation of Islam. We have to be fast moving, quick thinking, right down to the modern time. That's, that's movement, that's power. You can't have power and you're not getting any energy. So 
when I see all this Black Power family and Ashe and all this, where's the energy? What are you doing? What are you creating? It's thousands of you. And they can't, they can't turn on the lights. They can't turn on the lights. That's not Angel Stump number seven fault. I'm calling you out. Because you're making claims of black power, but there is no power. That's not my fault. That's your power. That's your fault. Because you don't know how to get power. The only thing you know how to do is talk. And you pretend like you Mark Clark. You pretend like you Fred Hampton. You pretend like you Malcolm. You're nothing but a bunch of couch potatoes. Because all of them, and even myself, we was boots on the ground. And we created energy. So when we said black power, there was a force. You hauling black power 50 years after the death of Dr. King, after the death of Malcolm and all of Mark Clark, you produce nothing. You claim black power and you have produced nothing. 50 years gone by. Uh, the, what about the Million Man March? See, brother, tell the whole thing. What about the, the Million Man March? What about it? What about you getting in your car, spending your money, wasting your money? You invested all this money to produce what? Just recently, this is not making mockery. This is why are you wasting? Because you don't know what to do. You're putting on a show. We had all these folks support Tariq Nasheed and they just went to Washington. Talk about reparation. What did it produce? I'm looking, I'm, I'm waiting for the video. What ha, what is it, what is that producing? And that's nothing. Those little marches, those little get together, not nothing compared to what they done in the 60s. You can't even replicate that. But they was youngsters. <laughs> Dr. King was a young man. But they was babies, really. You ain't learned nothing from their mistakes. You ain't learned nothing from their successes. Those strategies are out of date. We must evolve. We've got to grow into our own. You don't have to do what they done. What's wrong with your brain? Black power, but ain't no power come going to your brain. Everything's off. And you are too prideful. When time not Angel Stump number seven. Time has shown you don't know what to do. You keep doing the same thing over and over and you're not getting any results. That's not my fault. All thing I'm doing is reporting on it, which you already know. You're not accomplishing nothing. You're not getting, so where's the power? Why I say black power and there's no power? It's just a feel good. You might as well go to church, clap your hands for Jesus. And some of you, the Hebrew Israel, that's all they do is, it's nothing but another church for us to attend. You're too ashamed to say, I don't know. And you could bring power to black power, but I wouldn't even want to give the European classification, I wouldn't give it no power. That's why I say we should call ourselves soul brothers and sisters. That's our tribe. And we can define it as we feel it needs to be defined. Nobody can tell us, oh well that's not what it is. You can't tell me nothing because I created this.
So you can't tell me. So when I said brothers and sisters of soul, it automatically excludes all these other thoughts that don't have nothing to do with the descendants of slaves born in America. They can't, they can't use them. Well, I don't know who that person is. They're not no soul brother. They're not no soul sister. They black. They're not in my tribe. So I don't know what the hell they talking about. When you when you embrace soul, why why wouldn't you want to be a soul brother? First of all, that's a label, that's an identity that comes from your womb. I don't know what the origins is, and I know it has religious uh, uh, a definition. But so what? Soul is the essence of life. When you was called a Negro or a dead man, now you're getting your soul back and bring you being raised from the dead. Soul is what is the essence of life. It's life. Even the Caucasian people used to say, them some lively people. Because even in your oppression, you found a way to be happy. You found a way to survive. Getting your ass whooped, but you were singing a song. Down to the river, picking cotton, and you singing. Down to the river, Jordan, and blah, blah. Even in modern times, I remember one of my first jobs was in the kitchen. Nothing but a bunch of black people. They were singing, you know, modern day song. They just cooking their butt off, singing song. Making the minimum wage, you know, a, a, a different type of slave plantation. That's good and it's bad. What's bad about it is you become comfortable in your oppression. And so now we have million dollar basketball contracts, football contracts. Y'all uh, 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 y'all invest in, in cryptocurrency, you know, all these different things that make you comfortable. In this cesspool. Oh, Kamala Harris, a, a black woman, she's going to be the next president. Anything to keep you comfortable in the damn cesspool. And the Democratic Party has proven to be your worst enemy. Because, see, some people will just tell you outright. These folks, they demons. They won't tell you nothing. But you will, you, you will be in jail for 20 years when you should have been there for five or not at all. They will use their position to be who they really are and justify it with the law. These some slicksters. Donald Trump said, what you got to lose? You've been losing. You keep messing with the Democratic Party. Over and over. They ain't giving you nothing. So. I don't know why you can't give Donald Trump. A try. Let's see. Because you don't have nothing to lose. Can't be no worse than the Democrats. But we love abuse. We like getting our ass whipped. We like to cry. And we don't want to do nothing for ourselves. We're looking for the great white hope. We're looking for somebody to, to save us. If it ain't Jesus, it's Kamala. It was Joe Biden, but now it's Kamala now. They're going to save us. Or maybe Donald Trump. Maybe he might save us. Always looking for a, a savior. Always looking for a massa. But then you want to turn around, I'm free. You don't act like a free man. You don't act like a free woman. You even hate your ancestors. You don't care about 
the hell our ancestors went through just a few years ago. You only care about what you want. The crumbs. Because you're a slave, you cannot even imagine what would be given to you when you finally become free. That's why they don't understand and don't want to understand the vision that we have here called Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign. Only those with a free mind can understand and can comprehend. A slave, a slave cannot take control of a state. A slave is comfortable with massa, massa handling, massa guy, just like a child. A child don't worry about the bill. A child don't worry about nothing. Wait no mommy and daddy gonna handle that. And that's what we do. The white man is your mama and your daddy. Oh, they got it. Don't have to worry about it. Adults have to worry about things because they can't depend on nobody else except themselves. Even your dog Scruffy got to wait for you to put food in the bowl and do whatever. You act like a damn pet. We look like a damn pet. It's embarrassing. All I can see is them like patting us on the head like we like we ran 10 10. Because you're not a free man, you're not a free woman. I saw, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna get out of here. I saw a post. Because I keep up with uh, Dr. King's daughter, Bernice. Of course, she's endorsing Kamala Harris. I guess she thinks that's what her father would do. See, the thing about that is, we don't know how Dr. King or Malcolm, our people, we don't know how they would be if they was here in 2024. Things change. People, people, the way people, some folks, you was a Christian yesterday. Now you're Muslim today. Then you're atheist. Things people changing as time goes by. What they was yesterday, they might not even be today. So we talk about Dr. King. Dr. King back then, probably. We don't know what Dr. King might think and what he would want to do in 2024. Because things change. You're not the same person you was two years ago, let alone when you was six years old or when you was 10. So why are you gonna think Malcolm wouldn't change, Dr. King wouldn't change, Mark Clark and Fred Hampton wouldn't change? We don't know how they would do because they didn't have, they didn't have the internet. They also was, com they also was caught up in a mindset but we had a break from that mindset. So we should be able to see their, why they failed. We should be able to see and understand, okay, this is, why they, this is why they succeeded. This is why they failed. We should be able to learn from the mistake. So we can be who and what we are in 2024. Trying to copy the Black Panthers. I'm going to... I'm going to make a new Black Panther Party. I'm going to make a new Nation of Islam. I'm going to make a new uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I'm going to make a new, bring it back the old stuff. Let it die. Like you have to do your grandparents. You love your grandparents. But they had to die. And then you move into your time. And you will die. And your children will move into their time. Let the dead rest in peace. Ain't that what they put on the graves? Rest in peace. My job is done. It's over. Why are you going to keep talking about me and bringing me up? Hell, I'm going to be resting in peace. Dr. King, Michael Matt. You know why? You know why you got to do all that? Because you have no power. Because you're not doing a damn thing except living off dead folks' accomplishments. You should be shamed. 
We should be ashamed of ourselves. Living off dead folks. You got to do that because you have not accomplished nothing. It's thousands of you. Blackity black. Black power, black power. And you can't, you can't accomplish nothing. You can barely open up a lemonade stand. Black power. It's embarrassing. But there's hope. You live in a time where everything is just right for you. It's my belief. It's my belief that Donald Trump would be the president. That's my belief. I don't know. And if you had your act together, you could finally get something. Because through this vision called Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign, you have a goal, you have a purpose, you have a vision. You got a plan of action that brings you power. And you got a president that talk about he have a little concern for you. Maybe you can get something going. But Donald Trump or any president only going to have respect for a man and a woman. Nobody is going to have respect for slaves. Nobody's going to have respect for little children in adult bodies. That's why when you holler and scream, they just give you a pacifier. They don't even give you milk. They don't even give you Similac. They just take a little piece of rubber and put it in your mouth. Shut the hell up. And you suck on the rubber. We shall overcome. We that's not, that's not, you're not acting like a free person. This vision that we have here called Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign can give you what you claim that you want. I don't care if you're in the nation of Islam or the Hebrew Israelites or the Christian church. I don't care what you call yourself, but a lot of things that you claim that you want, this vision can get us and put us where we need to be. Where we should have been a long time ago. And the time is right. Everything is falling in place. You have everything that you need to put yourself, even though 50 years have gone by, you're still in a position to put yourself in a position where you should have been a long time ago. You don't need all these teachers where the teachers of Garvey, the teachers of Elijah Muhammad, teachers, you don't need all these teachers. You just need a plan and go to work. That's what you need to do. Work. And it's work. It's sacrifice. It's work. Sacrifice. And some of us might have to die. That's the price of freedom. Oh no, die. Lord, I want to see my grandkid. Lord, Dr. King didn't see his grandchildren. Malcolm X didn't see his grandchildren. Fred Hampton, his girlfriend or his wife was pregnant when he was assassinated. Didn't see the birth of his child. Who gonna sacrifice? For us, if we don't do it, somebody got to do it. Somebody got to take the plunge. All this feel good, hollering Ashe and black power, that's not going to get you nowhere. We see that. How long you been on social media with this stuff? Since 2005. All this talking on YouTube. Produce nothing except y'all made some of these people rich, wealthy. And why you like them? Because they give you nothing. 
Here I am. I wouldn't even feel good at night to sleep. And you working and you sacrificing. And you getting, I couldn't even sleep at night. Oh, but I'm in a beautiful house. You, you helped me, you done bought me three or four cars, I got a swimming pool and blah, blah, blah. These people sleep. You should wonder, how can, how could I sleep knowing that you hungry? You out of doors. And we as a people still in horrible condition, I'm living the good life. But if that's what you want, so be it. You won't support those who would actually go into the trenches and fight for everything that we need. You willing, you're going to give all your resources and your love to people that don't want to give you, that ain't giving you nothing. Because it, it, it sounds good. Ask the people that's homeless on the street what sounding good do for them. Oh, that's a good idea. That sound good. I don't do nothing for nobody. This is your day. This is your time. Either you can be the greatest generation ever produced, or you're going to be, or we're going to become the greatest losers ever produced. And then you pass down your patheticness, your cowardice, your laziness, your trifling ass crap down to the next generation because they don't know no better. 2050, black power family, 100 years that went by, black power family, black... <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'd rather be dead, resting in peace or not. I don't want to see... 2000, the year 2075, 2100, Black Palace Davis doing the same old garbage. How embarrassed. <laughs> black power or black comfortability. This thing called black power has been turned into black comfortability. You're comfortable. Being a slave. And they know you're a slave. I don't care. You can have all that black power stuff that you want to and act like you tough. They know you ain't nothing but a slave. Comfortable in Massa House. Comfortable in Massa House. With that said, we're going to get out of here. Again, we are simulcasting on uh, right here. On Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry, uh, YouTube channel, Angel Snubbin' Up 7, uh, YouTube channel, also uh, our Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry Facebook channel, and through that channel, our other affiliates that we have. And as soon as Rumble lets, 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 uh, lets people live stream for free, I'm gonna be over there. We're gonna live stream. Now, if, if folks wanted to give me some kind of support and wanted, you know, whatever. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Only thing you want is entertainment anyway. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I give you what I got. You know, though, when uh, Minister Farrakhan or some of these other people need things, their people get it for them. And they get nothing. I want to give you something back. I don't care if it's a bomb pop truck, a, 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 a lollipop. I want to give you something back. A few years ago, I even went in my own pocket and gave money away. These folks don't give nobody nothing. But that's how you are in these abusive relationships. Abuse is love. If you're not being abused, you don't feel like nobody care about you. Woo, that's sad. That's sad. So on that note, we're going to get out of here.
And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Those in the chat room, those out there in La La Land, out there in, in the air, to my uh, long-time listeners, to my enemies, I don't care. You're here. You, you're here listening to what I have to say, so whatever. Shout out to our brother, uh, Pharaoh, said that. We was on his uh, live stream not too long ago, and we, we did pretty good. Uh, never know how what these relationships gonna do, how they're gonna turn out, but we're gonna see what happened. It's up to us. Do you want power for real, or you just want to holler like a like a, a, a what they do that in in the country? The the uh, the pig calling contest. Calling the pig. That's all you do. Black power fella. You want to call the pig. <laughs> oh, at, at least when you holler for the pigs, the pigs might come. Or they uh they have the uh what the other thing? The husband calling contest. And the husband will come, you holler black power and don't get nothing. Nothing, nothing shows up. How embarrassing. And you really think I want to be part of Black Power? Oh no! Soul Power here, and I determine, and I define what and who that is. So again, with that said, we're out of here. And like our ancestor Don Cornelius used to always say as a party, we wish you love, peace, and soul. We are Audi 5000.